Hi, Rama. It's week 26, day two of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we're in 1 Kings chapter 20. We saw at the end of yesterday's reading, 1 Kings chapter 19, that Elijah has anointed his successor, Elisha, according to God's instructions. And God also mentioned other things to Elijah that we might expect to see take place. Uh, we might expect to see this new king of Syria and a new king of Israel. But no, as we begin chapter 20, we see that Ahab is still the king of Israel. And the king of Syria, Ben-Hadad, is, is approaching. And he is sending threats into Ahab. And at first Ahab says, well, sure, I will pay a tribute to you in order to avoid a war. I will pay you off, basically, to, to not come and attack us. But then when Ben-Hadad of Syria ups the ante, he says, no, I'm going to take even more than that. Then Ahab says, well, no, we're going to have to fight. And he, uh, he, he warns the king of Syria there in verse 11. Uh, Tell him, let not him who straps on his armor boast himself as him who takes it off. He's basically saying the battle's not over yet. Don't boast until we've actually had the fight. But God is working in this, not because Ahab deserves any blessings from God. Ahab is a wicked king. But God says, I'm going to intervene in this situation. And God gives them an unusual, unorthodox battle plan. He says, let the servants, the ones who were inexperienced in the military, the youthful ones, let them go out and lead the battle. And perhaps this catches Syria by surprise, but this is God's plan in ways that we've seen throughout the Old Testament that God's battle plans are not the ones that we want to study at the military academy today, but we do want to understand them because this is the way God was working for his people, showing that he was the one to deliver his people. And so uh, they, sure enough, win the battle uh, because God has been for them. But they understand that ultimately come next spring, the time when kings go out to battle, that Syria is going to seek retaliation. Uh, Syria has convinced itself, Ben-Hadad has convinced itself that uh, even while he was drunk in the last battle, he couldn't even give clear instructions. Uh, he's convinced himself that, no, really the problem is that we were fighting up in the hills and that's where their gods have power, so we're going to fight in the valley this time. And so that's, that's what happens. We see the battle happen again. But then in the end, Ahab does not kill. He does not execute Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria. He has been told by God, this is my will for you. This is the plan. You need to execute the enemy. But this is not what he does. They work out uh, a negotiation, and Ahab lets him live. Now, a certain man, verse 35, one of the sons of the prophets, comes and, and he's got this interesting story. Now there's a couple things we need to remember. This reminds us that God is not working only through Elijah or Elisha. We just saw Elisha anointed, but he's not the one being mentioned in this story. There are other prophets because God is still at work even in that still small voice as Elijah has learned. So we see that another prophet is working and he's coming uh, really in a similar way that Nathan went to King David. After King David had sinned, Nathan went and, and gave David this parable, the story, which aroused in David uh, this sense of justice. And David uh, pronounced judgment over the story that Nathan had given him. But then Nathan turned the tables and said, well, this is the judgment that will be on you. Well, that's what's happening here. This certain man, one of the sons of the prophets, he goes to Ahab and he gives him this story. Uh, he ha you see the, the interesting situation where he wants himself to, to look like he's been in battle. And so he, he asks somebody to hit him and the guy says no. And so uh, you're disobeying the prophet. He's punished for that. And the next guy comes, makes the prophet look like he's been in battle. And then the prophet goes to Ahab and tells him this story. And in the end, Ahab pronounces his own judgment. Verse 42 says, Thus says the Lord, because you have let go out of your hand the man whom I had devoted to destruction, King Ben-Hadad of Syria. Ahab was supposed to have executed him, and he didn't. Therefore, your life shall be for his life, and your people will be for his people. And that's exactly what happens as we keep reading the story. We're going to see that Ahab has pronounced his own death sentence. And verse 43 tells us that he's not uh, at all happy about it. He's not humbled before the Lord. He is vexed and sullen, and he goes back to Samaria. That's the end of the story for today, and here's a summary of today's reading.
For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.